Uh, Good afternoon, Yip. Um, this is Shana with Tales of Hawaii. And um, I would like uh, for you to introduce yourself, your background, and also this location uh, that you're located at. And Ni Hao. Hi, Shana. Hi. Uh, thank you for the invitation to join your special program and sharing our story from Hawaii. Uh, my name is Lucifer Yip Douglas, and you can call me Yip, my Chinese name. Uh, now I am at the Wohing uh, Temple. It's a part of the Wohing uh, Society Hall. Today, it is a uh, this is a museum, Wohing Museum, by the Lahaina Restoration Foundation. And um, I'm sitting here, is um, a very special place at one time for our ancestors, the Chinese coming here to Maui and to Lahaina. But before I will share with you today, I'd like to talk a little bit who I am. Uh, I, I was born in Thailand, a Bangkok, Chinatown. And I was told my family, they came from Canton, uh, Guangzhou, a small village in the southern part of China uh, called Yanping. So I also was told from my family that my ancestor left, they went in the wrong boat. So that's why I ended up in uh, Chinatown, Bangkok, Thailand. And my family owned a little grocery store in the middle of Chinatown, Bangkok. But I don't like uh, doing business, so I choose my own life. So I away from my family. And after I finished my first uh, degree in educational psychology, I went up to the mountain in the northern part of Thailand. And I live um, I, and work as a community development worker and teacher and working both the people up in the mountains in Thailand and the Thai lowland farmers for 15 years before I come into the Western world. Mm -hmm. And I spent uh, three years in Canada before I come into Hawaii. I got my master from Trent University um, in Peterborough, Ontario. And my PhD is from San Francisco in traditional knowledge. I had no idea, Chen uh, Hao, why and how my life ended up here. Uh, and I have been here almost 20 years in Maui, and I work for the Wohing uh, Temple Museum uh, together now almost uh, 17 years. But, um, so I would like to share with you and uh, about what my journey and what I have learned since I came. Uh, when I first came, I could not even speak the language when I came to the Western world. Uh, I, I did not have plan to live in the Western world. So really little knowledge about the history and understanding the culture, even who I am. So 20 years of living in the Western world allow me to learn more about my own roots to be an overseas Chinese. So working and living and being here is very significant for me. I feel like it seemed like a calling for me to be here to do a very important work that I did not know before. I actually, China, I tried to escape, run away many, many times. And I always feel like I have to come back here. Maybe because I still not finish the work that I need to do, the calling me to do. Um, so there are many things that I like to share. So, and thank you for this opportunity. So I would like to um, share um, with you uh, what I have learned to the research that we're doing here. Okay. In the past year, 
yes. Also, if you think interesting, I can share a little bit more about uh, my journey uh, 35 years ago when I was uh, up in the mountain and living in, in Thailand with the tribal people. That is my dissertation uh, named uh, Crying with the Dragon. Oh, yes. uh, so this is the very interesting um, uh, piece of story of my journey before coming to the Western world. Um, so, so if you think it's interesting, I will share. I have one section to share, special about uh, my journey, what um, I learned from the tribal people up in the mountain in Thailand to this dissertation for my PhD. So, uh, but today I will just a little introduction about uh, the research work that we are doing here yes. at the Warding, um, for the Warding Society and for the Warding Museum also um, to share a little bit what um, the exciting events that we are doing here. What the fruit that coming out from the research papers and bring back to life many uh, interesting uh, events uh, that we, we are doing now in each year. So today I will share and give an introduction about our special event we are doing at the Working Museum here by the Lahana Restoration Foundation and the Working Society. So I just uh, volunteer and helping everybody uh, organizing on this event. Uh, and we have an event coordinator to do all the work. But today I will share um, what, uh, what kind of event we, we are doing here and um, where all this event coming from. Okay. okay. So if that is interesting. Uh -huh. It's very interesting, and um, we will have to dedicate another, uh, I want to say, recording for your dissertation because that um, flying with the dragon sounds very fascinating. Um, let's see. So for this particular main topic uh, today, it's to introduce the Chinese on the Hawaiian Islands, yes? Oh, let's see. Okay, let's come over here. Oops. Test, test, testing. Hi. Hi, Jenna. Hi. I'm still I'm here. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's see. So, let me see. So there were, um, I pulled up three of the documents that were initially sent to me. Um, and that was... Yeah, the first, the first research paper. Um, um, uh, yes. This is a second one. The first one is the Chinese people in Hawaii. Okay. The society. Yeah, this is the first research paper. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. So I can chat. Uh, when I first came, um, I worked as a volunteer and I started to work as a docent at the Warhim Museum. And there are many questions. Uh, from the visitor asking about the history of this society building. 
and also about um, the Chinese coming here to Lahaina. So I start to do this research from, um, and also at that time, I involved with the Wohin Society uh, that owned this, uh, this uh, building and together with the cookhouse. Um, so so uh, this is the picture of the um, um, society or the Wohin Temple Museum today. You can see this uh, a painting of a very um, well-known artist portrait. We have a main society hall and the cookhouse right here. So uh, I will share more about, um, the, um, about this building. And this first research is about the, the Chinese uh, arriving, coming to Hawaii and about the, the history far back before the children came. Uh, it was a sandalwood trader. So we have a document called Finding Sandalwood Mountain. So that's, um, I also helping uh, interview people at that time to collect the story and make this um, uh, interesting documentation, uh, Finding Sandalwood Mountain. Uh, that's uh, the history before the sugarcane plantation. So the Chinese coming to Hawaii uh, from our research um, far back, maybe uh, the written history said uh, 10 years after Captain Ken James Cook arrived in 1788. But from our research, if you recall, there's a book called 1421. You heard about that book, China, China Discovering the World. So uh, that document refer Hawaiian, um, they already have some uh, evidence to prove the Chinese may come to Hawaii at that time in 1421. So that means we, from the research, we learn more the first early, how early the Chinese came here to Hawaii. That way it's actually to find out because of the plan was uh, you know, all the, the tree here is not local, it comes from other people who bring to the island, the coconut or the flowers have the name of, of from the, they say it's original when the, our ancestors travel, they carry the seeds and plant the seeds. So like the gumquat, the lowquat, many flowers, and they all have the story far back that come from China. So that's referred in that book 1421. But in this research, we talk a little bit about the arrival and the achievement, the contribution of the Chinese also. In this first research paper, Chinese people in Hawaii, and then um, the connection to this working society. So I like to highlight a few things in this introduction. And if uh, you think interesting, we can go back and learn more in different area, okay. The most exciting thing from this research we found out is uh, the, um, 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 that on Maui, uh, this is the islands of uh, the map of Maui, okay. And our uh, working society is right here in Lahaina. So the, uh, the islands Maui is a part of um, um, the Hawaii island that have, uh, this is the small side, you can see we have a number of lion, uh, I, I, islands here. So, so the, the point here is the islands of Maui that um, I shared the story for. So, so, so from the research, we have uh, a lot of Chinese come here and on Maui have um, the society have seven society buildings here on Maui, different sugarcane plantation community from uh, 1852. Okay, that's the highest number of Chinese coming to Hawaii. And then um, hundreds of them were members of this working society and then all over. And this is another interesting site I will share. It's called Kula. So they also uh, refer to the Sunyasen family. 
So that's from this research, we found out the Chinese people in Hawaii Loving Society. We found out a very interesting uh, story about Sun Yat-sen, uh, the father of modern China. So, so this is the home of the elder brother of Sun Yat-sen, Sun Mei. So we can share more about this story also. So today, the, um, at one time, we have seven of the society hall, and then today only two left here. This is so, the so document. This is the, life, the document that I refer, the life of Sun Yat-sen in connection to Maui. Okay. So, so if you think interesting, I can share more about uh, Sun Yat-sen also. I and mean, we have an article talking about this. Uh, yeah, the life. Interesting. Okay. Of Sun Yat-sen. You like me go a little bit more detail now? Or you like me come back to the working society? Um, I would Check say, out. let's see, this is um, now the third article, yes? Uh, yeah, that's the article about the Sun Yat-sen. It's a part coming out from the three, the two research papers. Um, I just give an introduction. Okay, yes. So like the, the first research I mentioned uh, about the Chinese people in general coming to about Hawaii, about working society and the connection to other society on, on Maui that have um, the one that up in Kula that I show in the map is a, a, the Cocking Society. So, so that's um, belong to Dr. Sun Yat-sen. So I, um, I can share more detail about the story. Just one chapter of this is the history of Sun Yat-sen uh, and this uh, connection to Maui. And also in this first research uh, paper, so we 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 found out they were. Uh, that's lead to the second research uh, document about the working society that you, uh, this is a second research paper that are 100 pages. So the first research paper, uh, it took me a few years to, uh, mainly it come from interview people and from all the books that uh, have a story to share. Okay, and the second research paper, we we have a research team helping us, and we have uh, we do a lot of work uh, to translate the plaques and couplets. You can see here are the uh, the wooden plaques and couplets. We we do translation. We have uh, two thousand pieces of Chinese records. We found a box with all this um, um, a record historical records here at the Working Society Hall. Yeah, this is the document. And uh, the class couplet and records, and we do some translation, and we got some funding from the county of Maui at that time. And we do this uh, research, we finished in the year 2008. So this uh, from uh, I will highlight a few things of from this research paper that is very exciting about the working society hall later uh, about um, the location of this working society hall. Um, so so uh, I can have one section you talk about all these records, okay, and what we found, and to this research. Uh, brought us to understand more about uh, our ancestors who came here and what did they do and uh, understand how any messages they would like us to learn from. It left in these uh, plaques and couplets and all the records here, including receipts of the store owned by the Chinese. Like, um, I can a chair a little bit uh, like this is the map of the Lahaina town. So at one time, uh, uh, this block used to be a little Chinatown. And we are right here. So we are right here in the working museum right here. So from this uh, research, we found a lot of receipts, the store owned by the Chinese. This block used to be a little Chinatown. 
barrier to their northern land, no more stolen by the Chinese. Only this society hall left is the last survival building, a symbol of Chinatown on Front Street. So very interesting. So uh, if you think interesting, I can share more about our town because China Town very interesting. At one time, it was a home of the, uh, the king of Hawaii. They picked Lahaina as his oh, capital city, the kingdoms of Hawaii. That's so it's right. not only the Chinese we have, it's also a, a welding town. A lot of welders came. They can't handle well. They stop here for fresh water and supply. Because we have a lot of fresh water in Lahaina town. Um, right. and, um, and we have a big tree called Banyan tree. Banyan. Mm -hmm. So if you come to Lahaina, you will uh, please come to visit yes. <laughs> because this is our many historical uh, site. We need museum to see an interesting uh, a secret site of the Hawaiian kingdom. So uh, beside the Chinese, we have the, uh, the Japanese came after the Chinese working the Chica King. They also opened the store and business together with the Chinese. And also we have uh, Portuguese, uh, Portuguese Spanish people who are here, uh, decide together with the Hawaiian and Filipino is the last group. So they all live in this area and together with the missionary who came. We have the first missionary home, the Bobby home, mm -hmm. right here. So that's also interesting. Um, the, the first early missionary came in eight, early 1800, 1820. So Dr. Bowens have uh, a lot of contribution here also together with many walks of life. So it's a very interesting town, Lahaina. <laughs> it's like a rainbow when many uh, people bring, they give their culture and branding together now. Today, very few Chinese live here, the food life from the first generation uh, to the intermarriage. Uh, with okay. the Hawaiian, almost every Hawaiian has a little bit Chinese blood. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, intermarriage with the Japanese who came after, and Portuguese, Spanish, and um, Korean. So uh, many walks of life, very interesting um, to share. So we have a new um, museum here called a Plantation Museum. So talking about more story there. Oh. Uh, in that. So I can share more about that museum later. And they have interesting um, uh, story, many artifacts in art there. Okay, at the, um, beside our museum, there's a plantation museum. At the courthouse also have a heritage museum. Oh. Beside the Bowen Home Museum. So, so um, these are interesting towns. It so is. For, for uh, if you come to visit, uh, just you know, just enjoy <laughs> all the beauty and learn the history and uh, uh, and see the changes that happen to the years mm -hmm. in this town. That's why in our event, one of the events that we have, um, we try to understand our history called Chinese heritage. Mm -hmm. A Chinese Heritage uh, Festival. Uh, we just have this event um, uh, in uh, November the, the 9th. So, oh. uh, uh, so I can share um, each event, uh, what we do, and uh, you know, uh, this, this is one of the four events, and it's coming from the research that we did. From the research we found out, the Chinese came here, they did a lot of festival in this society hall. And um, so like the Chinese New Year, so this is all the four events. Uh, the Chinese New Year is one of them. This is the year of the dog. Wow. So beside the Chinese heritage in November, uh, we have the Chinese New Year in February. So every year we have a the Chinese who came here, they used to celebrate the Chinese New Year. And then it disappeared for a long time and come back to life again. Oh. So, 
So I have, now we, hmm. I have a question. Um, so the Chinese came in 1421 initially? Yes. Yes. And is there a trade that was happening between the Hawaiian? Uh, the 1421, um, we had to do more research uh, okay. because the information we, we, from our research is um, they mentioned about Hawaii in that book called 1421. Incredible. Um, uh, uh, next time I can bring the book. And oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, in that book, they did not mention about trading or anything. Uh, they just said there are um, evidence to prove that um, the plant, the seed here in Hawaii is not local. Uh, it's all come from other place. Uh, they uh, refer to possible the Chinese um, at that time must make a trip here and stop in Hawaii and let uh, the seed here and until today. So that's the thing. Uh, but the trading start uh, from a, a number of research refer to um, the big island they found in uh, 1870, uh, 1778. That's a, the, his, his, um, the written history. They found the first group of Chinese coming to Hawaii from the big island in 1788, 10 years after Captain James Cook arrived, as I mentioned. Oh, so after that time, okay. uh, after that time, they, uh, I was told the Chinese came in a, during the welding ships. They hired the Chinese to work as a cook, oh. in cooking. Yeah. Um, that why when the Chinese, uh, they need uh, cut the woods and burn the, the wood for cooking. They use, and then the beautiful fragrance is coming out from burning this special wood that how they found the sandalwood. Oh my so gosh. The Chinese introduced that beautiful fragrance is the special fragrance from the sandalwood. That how the sandal the sandalwood already here, but the people I was told the people don't know the meaning until the Chinese came. The introduced the meaning how how significant this sandalwood is a special wood that beautiful fragments that make furniture, make uh, herbal medicine and use for many purposes. So uh, today not many sandalwood to like here in the Yes. Because fifty years of trading sandalwood during King Kamehameha. And uh, make the um, and another history that a little bit sad in Hawaii during the sandalwood traders. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so a lot of sandalwood tree already. Um, okay. So we, because after we cut one tree, another hundred years for the tree to mature again, it takes a long process. It's a long process. So, so we are in the process of replanting up in a different mountain, different islands for future generations. Okay. To appreciate sandalwood again. That's the story uh, of sandalwood and the Chinese. So wow. when the sugarcane plantation start, um, that, that I refer in the uh, late eight, middle eight, 1852, um, and no workers, so that's why they went to China and brought a lot of workers here. And uh, Sunye, the elder brother of Sunya Singh, came during the, that time of the history. Is the um, during that uh, Sunye lot of bought a lot of workers here <coughs> so, <coughs> to the island. Okay. And uh, helping in the sugar cane. This is Sunye, the elder brother of Sunya Singh. So that why. Uh, from the first research and the second research, we found lots of information uh, about Sunya Sen and Sunye. During the sugarcane plantation, how Sunye came 
I can share in another section, particular about the story of Sunne and Sunya Singh. Okay, that would be great. interesting. During that sugar cane plantation, Sunne came. And a um, lot of contribution. In yeah. Fact, Sunya Singh came to the island when he was 13 and sent him to school, sent him to a medical school, and came back to Maui and helped him. So uh, we can talk more in one of the sections in particular. This is very interesting history. And this is the book we will use in our talk, okay? So from the research, we have a book about Sunya Sen oh. in connection to him. Okay. This is a book. And then this another book we from the research we found out in the Chinese family and the Monokai. This is all interview people. Oh my this goodness. is all from interview. So all this um, many interesting stories we can share. And uh, about Sun Yat Sen, I, I, I make a few trips to China to and Taiwan. And this is a book from the research that I share with you. It's coming from Chesan. Uh, and this is a related to about story of Sun Lei. Oh. And the side about Sun Yat Sen, I met with Dr. Lili Su Fong San, the granddaughter of Sun Yat Sen. And this is she wrote this book. So all uh, this book had um, they really contribute uh, to our research paper uh, to learn about the history. Doc, uh, Dr. Lili Sui Fong San lived in Honolulu, and she. Uh, she said the dreams of her grandfather came to her and then calling her to follow the footsteps of Sun Yat Sen. So she, um, she devoted her life for many, many years, 30, 40 years. She went back to China and collect all the old pictures is put together in this document. Mm -hmm. And she still continued. Uh, to spread the teaching of her grandfather to make a number of um, the statue, you know, 200 statue all over the world. Um, so um, we can share more from all this uh, history, okay? Wow. Uh, this is all the statue that she on uh, Hawaii. Maui have three of them. Um, up one up in Kula that I show in the map, one in front of our uh, society hall, and one okay. up in um, uh, Kapani White Park. So, so this is also very exciting a story how the history of Sun Yat Sen survived and bring back to life again mm -hmm. at the Rodin Museum today. And to the research, we was able to spread um, the the story that we learned and we have uh, the special event called uh, Honoring Sun Yat Sen to uh, every uh, year now uh, we can share what we learned from the research. So this event is in November oh. and then we combine to the Chinese Heritage uh, okay. so the Chinese Heritage Museum so, so we, we have uh, opportunity to in the past year when I came actually I know nothing much about Sun Yat Sen uh, but we grown up our home always have uh, a picture of Sun Yat Sen um, in front at our home but we don't know much about the story I, I don't know there are so many um, interesting uh, story and the connection to Hawaii to Maui in particular. So after we learn all uh, this event help us share our story. So I can share more in our one section in particular about Sun Yat Sen. Okay. Yeah. This. That would be great then, to hear more about uh, Sun Yat Sen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then um, um, this um, from the research we found many records in this um, temple. There is an uh, ancestor room on one of the okay. end. This is the main altar, the ancestor room. have uh, the old records that refer to um, the organization uh, that's supporting Sun Yat-sen. That's why we, we 
find out that Wobi society is one of many Chinese society that have contribution to the revolution of Sun Sen. So he was a great man and the dream the granddaughter of Sun Sen and her son Charles Wong, they did a lot of study and share with us about the dream of Sun Yat-sen, not only for China, it's for the whole world as one family. Uh, that is very interesting to learn that Sun Yat-sen's dream is for the whole world as one family. So uh-huh. when we go to the section of Sun Yat-sen, I will bring more story to share. This oh. is one of the things we like to share. From oh, that would be so, great. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, I do have just one question. Um, okay. For Sun Yat-sen, uh, where does he come from? Or where does his family come from in China? So Sun Yat-sen, he, uh, they came, uh, he came from the, um, a little village called Zhongshan in Canton, Guangzhou. Wanzhou, okay. Uh, province uh, in southern part of China. Southern part. Close to, to Hong Kong. Okay. So that's, that's his uh, home village called Zhongshan. Okay. And then in the section of Sun Yat-sen, I can uh, uh, share more in details the journey of Sun Yat-sen come and how um, many trip and how we found all this work. And it would be interesting, uh, yesterday, uh, Charles Wong just came to visit us, the great-grandson. Oh. Uh, he said he really to share more uh, story also he, that we recently found. So you have seen have a lot of connection uh, with Japan. He has a great-granddaughter uh, uh, from Japan. So there are some interesting, he has many friends in Japan that support him. Hmm. And he has, uh, so at that part, uh, if you like. Yeah, we will uh, save that uh, one. We said, <laughs> we said that one. It's very interesting, yeah. the revolution of Sun Yat-sen, how, you know, why Sun Yat-sen is so special. <laughs> there were um, a 10 uprising failed before the 1911, they called Sinha Revolution, October uh, 10, 1911, that he overthrown the Manchu government. The last emperor who started um, the Democratic um, Republic of China. Oh. So that's another very interesting journey of Sun Yat-sen, what we can learn from mm-hmm. that part of the history, why this great man never giving up his dream. And uh, I, for me personally, I was so touched and more. And every time I do the research, I always have tears in my eye. Because I noticed to the revolution, so many people satisfy their life. Yeah. Um, they know this. Their husband went to Joyce and Yassin. Their son went to Joyce and Yassin. They, they have no chance to come home, but they still let them go to join the revolution. So that a really touched me in my heart. And every time I think of if I was one of the people in that town, what that means to me. So that part of the history really touched me and asked, brought me to many questions what it means to me uh, in today's world, what we can learn from the history and what it means for future generation to learn from, in particular for the overseas Chinese here in particular, um, that they, they left China because there was no hope. And um, actually, from the research, I like to thank uh, Stanley 
our research team find out there was a book, there is a book called um, uh, Could They Speak? Could They Speak? Mean that working people, they interview many generation of Chinese who left China. Majority went to Africa and Latin America to work as slaves and minority came to Hawaii. So at uh, that part, that why Sun Yat-sen play a significant role in the history because he, for us, we call him the father of China because he, without him, we will not be here today. And for all the overseas Chinese, we honor him. He made the roots open, the roots, the gates from China to for, for us to the world and how the journey brought us to today for the uh, they call it, um, American born Chinese here they call it ABC <laughs> the American born Chinese or the or the overseas Chinese. So for me I was that generation is the fruit coming out from as an overseas Chinese. So if you like, I can, one section we can share in particular about Sun Yat-sen. I can bring on the information, the record. Okay. To share more. That, that would be great. It's, um, uh, I have all the documents and it's just a matter of sitting down, reading it. Um, but to have your story on it, um, I will send you an email, but, um, he sounds like now that I'm hearing from you, the story, uh, the significance, um, of Sun Yat-sen, it's, um, he probably should have his own episode or recording. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you like, I... Actually, I don't know much. I still, in, as a student, I still in the process of learning more. Okay. Um, and I like to, if this section, I like to invite people who know more than me. Like, okay. Um, uh, Charles Wong, the great grandson, so he lived his life, followed the footsteps. So I feel like he should be the one to share the story. Uh, but I can share from the side what the working society do in our event, okay, and that we like to keep the history alive and then go into the details of the history. And in particular, um, Sun Yat-sen have a very big dream called the San Ming Ju Yi, the three principles of the people um, that he, he put together how China should be developed. And Charles chat with me today, China follow that path um, and bring back to life what the dream of Sun Yat-sen. So uh, there are many um, information from the research that I personally, I found really ex interesting and exciting for us to share. So in that case, I'd like to invite uh, people who know more than me to have the opportunity to share directly from the source. Okay. okay. If it um, can be arranged, that would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I love to um, help if I can support arranging things and um, share uh, different aspects from the history of Sunya Singh. So one thing is um, uh, where he coming from, as you said, um, his, from his hometown and then um, about uh, how the Sunday journey came to Hawaii from the man with nothing until become the richest man okay. here after 10 years in Honolulu, 25 years of Maui. So that was so interesting about the elder brother of Sun Yat-sen and then come to Sun Yat-sen um, that what is his dream, his teaching, and how significant today uh, his dream for 
the whole world as one family or for how um, uh, this idea about how China should be there. So, so that also exciting thing uh, to share. That's cool. all coming from our um, the first research brought to the second research, and we have more records, and then we connect to all the people who have the story to share with us, and they continue to do um, research back to China to learn how uh, Sun still play a significant role or not. And then Charles Wong worked with the young people also, went to the university and talked to the, the new generation of China and to understand how China um, today and uh, what it means, the history of Jinsen in the past and what the future should be. They think about the future. So mm -hmm. that's also a very exciting section oh, yeah. to uh, if you think um, would like to you know to share to the world. Wow. Uh, let, we can arrange that part, okay. Okay. <laughs> well that sounds wonderful. It's such an exciting um information that is being shared here and I really appreciate your time and um your connection especially <laughs> so thank you thank you thank you very much and you think uh is anything else for us for today um excuse me uh, one you like me to chat for today or um oh yes actually um so we have a good introduction of um the let's see the papers that were shared, just a brief one. And um, in terms of wishes uh, for, for the society, are there any wishes that, um, uh, we have an audience here in Europe and Switzerland, what would, uh, what would the wishes for the society be? Uh, thank you, it's a very good question, and um, I'm not sure I the one have okay. the answer. <laughs> okay. uh, the working society today is, uh, we have uh, the board members and we have uh, this, uh, and a group of uh, people who, some are related many generations. Our president Kevin Kang and Bobby Santo is the vice president, and we have a new team: uh, Jack Lee, our secretary Pen, working uh, to take care, you know, all the financial. So, and all the uh, we are a small group of people here. They um, continue to um, working together, and how we can. I think now we, we are in the process of organizing you into put together. Um, I think they already have the bylaw, the mission statement, and authority okay. of the society. It's a 501c2, so that means it's a non profit organization. Okay. And, uh, the objective is how to, the, the history and the culture to. Okay. To, it, to keep it alive and for the future generation mm -hmm. how to take care of um, this society hall that is very um, important and significant for um, and continue um, now we because we have many cultural events mm -hmm. at the voting society uh, doing this is uh, another one that very beautiful is the Moon Festival. Oh, uh, yes. Beside the Chinese New Year, and uh, it's the Moon Festival. So the Wuhan Society, together with the Lahaina Restoration Foundation, we try to bring back to life many uh, cultural tradition festival. So this is uh, one of them, the Moon Festival in September. So oh, yeah. it's a very, so the Visual ceremony keep the community together, keep um, 
the culture of life and bring people together to feel connected, the family feel connected, and the community have a purpose and understand. We come together to learn about our past and what it means to today, as I said, and for the future generation, the children to know who we are, where we come. So I think it's wonderful for all your friends from Switzerland and from Europe. Actually, we don't know much about your, <laughs> uh, the, uh, your culture, your tradition also. And you may have uh, many uh, you know, overseas Chinese live in your community. So um, um, we can come together. So today the Chinese culture is not only culture. Chinese itself, we, we invite all walks of life come. So from the survey, uh, all the cultural events we have, actually uh, we have one called Kai Festival also. Oh. The Kai Festival, okay. something new. Uh, so to all these festivals, we, we talk to the, the people who came, you know, the audience, the visitor. Actually, most of them came from um, uh, the mainland and from Europe, from international, maybe from your uh, country too. Yeah, <laughs> so probably. we have visitors come from Swiss, from Europe. So you can come and visit us. Actually, we already have our schedule uh, planned for next year, okay. so 2019. So I... all the event is planned from the Moon Festival, the Kai, the Moon. Uh, the Chinese New Year Moon Festival, Chinese New Year Kai Festival, Moon Festival, and Chinese Heritage. Already we have a date, so you can plan your trip. If you have plan coming to Hawaii and come to Maui and to Lahaina to join the festival and come to visit the museum, okay. and I love to welcome all who come to uh -huh, and share with you more about our story history and thank you for keep it alive and uh, what we can learn from each other and bring this world come closer as one family as the dream of Dr. Sun Yat Sen. Uh, so the way of supporting have many ways and the spiritual support is important like what you are doing in spread the story and connecting us together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and helping us, our research, I, to me, I feel like just, just the beginning. We like to invite more people who know more story, come and help us. Something may not correct. So the history has to be always updating with new information, new story, and right. bring the missing piece of story back to life. So maybe some missing piece of story is coming from your world from your community, from Switzerland, from Europe. So we never know. Because the Chinese travel, <laughs> our ancestors travel all over the world. Yes. So maybe there are a missing piece of history coming from your community can bring back to life and connect with us here in Hawaii. And right here in Maui, we never know. Yeah. So that, that is a, one of my personal dreams. I think working society, it just um, the gate we open for people come together and to learn and to share and to connect. Oh, that's beautiful. Supporting each other. Yes, that's very important. <laughs> that is our dream. Okay. What? What do the Swiss and the Europeans need to know about the Chinese on the Hawaiian Islands? We always ask good questions. <laughs> uh, I try to see if I can answer. Uh, um, the history of Chinese in Hawaii. I, I still a student uh, in learning more. <laughs> Because I'm not original from here, I come from, the, um, from Thailand. So I am not sure I can represent the voice from this land of the ancestors. But from the research, I can 
share a little bit what I know um, is I know um, it's not the Chinese community to Hawaii have many stories. Some have they are both the positive, the beauty side, and some is like the symbol of the yin yang the Chinese have have the dark side and the white side. So in our history, I feel like we have both, we have to understand both the dark side and the white side, mean the beauty side the, and the sad, the sadness in our history. Mm -hmm. uh, the darkness of the history, also the, the, the beauty of the history. So I think it's important to learn from um, both sides of the history. And uh, many Hawaiian historians, we can say things slightly different. If you read the document from Chinese in Hawaii, they may say different things slightly different. And it is okay because the Chinese not always say the same thing, even do the same thing. Like we talk about the celebration of Chinese New Year, they can do slightly different thing, different cultural ceremony, slightly different, but there are something in common and something are different because China is very big. Yeah. And when come to the Chinese migration to Hawaii, when they live in different islands, different community, they may do things slightly different, and it is okay. And they may say things slightly different. So how we can um, listen to all the voices? Because history book today was written according to uh, what they want people to know. So they're always a missing piece. So we have to search for the missing piece. And to say what already written, uh, it may not be the way it was written. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's for me. It's our responsibility to understand the history. Also, in my PhD training, the elders in traditional knowledge we came to Hawaii and learned from the Hawaiian elders. They said it's important to looking back to the history and healing, healing the darkness, the historical wound from the history. That means it's a responsibility. We have to take responsibility, look back to our history to heal the darkness, bring back to light and to understand and for future generations. So that's the message uh, we like to share. From our history. Okay, thank you so much. Does that make sense? It you? makes perfect sense. I I apologize because English is my fifth uh, language. Fifth language? I wow. could not speak English when I came to. Not, wow. I just in the process of learning. And, um, you so do very I, well. <laughs> you do very well. <laughs> So thank you for the opportunity for me to have this experience and uh, gain more confidence at the oh, same time. Of course, <laughs> it's really to share um, from the Wo, uh, Wo Hing, the Wo Hing, Wo Hing uh, yeah, Society, society the um, and today it's a museum. And it's a museum, a yes. Museum. We have many... Uh, artifacts in the first floor if you come the oldest is 5,000 years. Wow. So we have a good friend Dennis Bryan from New York. Actually okay. he is not Chinese but he came and shared with us many artifacts with many uh, stories. So if you come to the Warning Museum you will see many interesting you know, artifacts besides uh, artifacts left by the Chinese who were one time. Okay. okay. At so, the first floor, we have many things. There. And then we have a cookhouse and we have the movie by Thomas Edison, 1890 and 1906 to enjoy Bahamian at that time. So, and see the old kitchen. <coughs> so many interesting things here if you come to visit. Okay. Uh, 
There are, and yes. I look forward to welcome all of you who come to Lahainai. Please we, visit us. <laughs> Thank you. We will. We will. We, Maui is one of the favorite places. <laughs> um, Thank well, you. I don't want to take up more um, of your time, but do you have any last words before we close up then this, um, this recording? I'd just like to thank you, Shana and uh, the husband, for this, um, for your commitment and um, your beautiful work in sharing our story from Hawaii. It's very, it's very important work that you are doing to help the world come closer and understand English. I appreciate very much. I'd like to thank you and Mahalo and Shishen. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is oh, our pleasure. Yes. Oh, well, thank you. And we will be in touch again for another session. Okay. I'd, I'd like to share about the Chinese New Year next talk. Oh. The Chinese New Year have a different calendar from the Western. It's follow the lunar calendar. Yeah. So it's falling into February the 8th. The 5th is the exactly Chinese New Year. And we have a celebration on the 8th. So we can talk more about the celebration of the Chinese New Year next one if you like. Okay, yes. And what is um the Chinese New Year for next year? Okay. The next year will be the year of the, uh, the boar. The boar, okay, yes. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> All right. So we can share about uh, our new years. Okay. So let's talk and it, together with. Uh, and I have a friend, Dennis, will come here okay. uh, next month. Dennis Ryan, uh, he will bring and uh, all artifacts uh, that have a story. Uh, each Chinese New Year, he will bring like this year is the year of the dog. This year is the year of the dog oh, that yeah. will end in February the uh, the fourth. So uh, Dennis uh, brought a, a two thousand year old tomb dog and shared with us how the dog contribution to the world. This is our last Chinese New Year. It is said that the dog saved human time from a big flooding coming and people have no food to eat and the dog went into the muddy field and came out with the grain of rice. That's how the farmer start to pour in rice and save human time. So that's one of the story from the dog year. But the ball uh, Dennis will bring some new story how the origin of the dragon is coming out from the pig ceremony on the boar because the boar, the pig is very significant animal is one of the very important animal in the Chinese culture and traditions mm. Mm. and there are many legend story in the old day uh, that Dennis will share with us so we can do a talk together with Dennis and share all, uh, he will bring the items that carry the, the story, the connection from the pig ceremony is the bird, uh, the origin of the dragon coming, how the dragon uh, evolving from the pig ceremony in the ancient time. Oh my goodness. Is that that, exciting, huh? That so is. <laughs> I can invite Dennis to sit with me and talk story and show all his artifacts and we talk about the, the beauty of the celebration of Chinese New Year, what, how significant and the origin right, coming from, how we celebrate the Chinese New Year. Okay. okay. I would love and, that. And I would be great. And go into the ball. Yes. We, I'm in the, <laughs> process of researching and put together our uh, presentation. So we are happy to chat with you next month. Okay. Uh, before our Chinese New Year. Uh, and on February 8th, we have a celebration here. If you're in town, please come and join us. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> we will be free. The museum will be free. Okay. You can come and, uh, join. 
Wow. <laughs> to town, to La Jolla town. Yes, we I... Set up, we will set up an exhibit and display how we do our thing during Chinese New Year inside the clubhouse and the temple we do, um, you know, special occasion. People go to the temple during Chinese New Year. So, and we will have uh, yeah, something special here oh. to share with you. <laughs> Thank you again. Oh, thank Look you. Look forward to sharing you more. Okay? Yes, yes. <laughs> so if you like, uh, let me know. I will uh, invite Denise to the next talk. Okay? Oh, yes, to talk about um, the year of the boar would be great. The boar, yes. Yes, okay. Well, <laughs> we will plan on that. Thank you again so much. Yeah. Mahalo nui loa. <laughs> yes, shishini, jai jian, sawadika. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. Okay. Aloha. We will see. And um, uh, please give my big aloha to um, John as well. For yeah, I'd like us. to thank you, John, very much and, uh -huh, okay. for his support. Yes. And, uh, the friends who are helping me. And thank you for your encouragement and, uh -huh, okay. yes. and okay. inspiration. Thank you. Oh, of course.